while they are speaking. If you would like to say something, you can raise your hand or you can use the chat if it is a question, for example. Um, this panel discussion will be will last one hour and a half. And at the end, we are going to discuss about the outcome of the quiz competition. Hello, um, everyone. We are so happy to have you during uh, for this special panel on astronomy in Africa. Um, we have a lot of speakers coming from big institutions um, in astronomy. Welcome, Charles. Hello, Nikita. Hello, Dr. Emeka. We are so glad to have you online. One of the speakers could not join us today because of health issue, but we are going to um, consider the recording starting now. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this special panel on astronomy on the topic space and astronomy as a building block for STEAM for the next generation. We are so glad to have the support of Eureka Geo, who is the local host of this edition. This edition is being aligned with the Acting Space Competition, that is an international hackathon competition with the support of Aerospace Valley. We are also super glad to have the support of Space in Africa for the communication, Space Generation Advisory Council um, as the main partner for this special panel discussion and the quiz competition, including the skywashing that happened yesterday. And uh, we are so happy to also acknowledge the support of some um, important partners, such as um, AFAS and the Africa um, Astronomy, uh, Astronomy Society, Afri sorry. Africa Astronomy Society that will be introduced later properly by Mr. Charles Takalana. Um, OAD that will be also properly introduced by Nikita and uh, many others. Thank you very much for all your support, for your contribution, for um, supporting also the quiz competition with a lot of um, gifts and prizes. Now we are going to kick off the uh, panel discussion. I would like to start this by giving two minutes to our speaker to introduce themselves. But at the same time, I would like them to, res to respond to this question. What motivated you to do astronomy? So please, I would like to start with Nikita. Can you introduce yourself um, uh, in two minutes? And also let us know why you choose astronomy. Okay, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Um, thanks so much uh, for the opportunity to be here to talk to all of you. Um, I'm really glad that I, I get to speak to you and, and share a bit about what I do and uh, uh, I guess about why uh, we have a passion for astronomy. Okay, so uh, as Charles says, I'm Dr. Nikita Mabin Paul. I, uh, I am from South Africa and I work for the Office of Astronomy for Development. So what that office does is uses basic um, different sort of aspects of astronomy to try and impact development around the world. So um, it's a little bit hard to understand how one could do that, but for a, a basic example is to use something like um, astrotourism. Uh, you know, many countries, uh, developing countries as well in the world have uh, access to very nice, beautiful, dark skies, as I think some of you saw um, last night, hopefully. And um, we can use that to, to sort of impact uh, socioeconomic developments by creating um, job opportunities. So uh, that's, that's the Office of Astronomy for Development. Um, it's an office of the International Astronomical Union and uh, has been uh, operating for about 11 years now, uh, supporting um, hundreds of different astronomy for development projects around the world. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the hackathon program, which I'll talk about just now, is, is part of one of the initiatives of the Office of Astronomy for Development. Um, okay, and why, why I uh, chose to uh, be in this field is, um, 
So from a very young age, uh, I guess where I live, we have, uh, we, you know, there isn't much light pollution, so I could uh, see some very nice clear skies and it, it just always inspired me because um, it made me feel like there's so much more out there um, to, to us on earth and, and all our problems, everything we've ever experienced in our lives and in history um, is so insignificant um, compared to the vastness uh, of the universe. And that's a really nice perspective um, to have. And obviously it's just very um, awe-inspiring and, and so interesting to, to, to try and figure out what, what's going on in the universe. Thanks. Thanks to you. Um, that's so that's so inspiring to us to hear that. Uh, Mr. Charles, yeah, Mr. Charles Takalana, um, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, but also let us know why you're choosing astronomy, the astronomy field? Um, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is um, Charles Takalana, and um, I am the head of secretariat for the African Astronomical Society. Um, and just to tell you briefly about the African Astronomical Society, that we are a Pan-African Society for Professional Astronomers um, on the African continent. Um, and what we look to do is look to be the voice of astronomy in Africa and to look at how we can address challenges faced by Africa through the use of, of astronomy. Um, and we also work with uh, astronomy-related fields, including space science, and try to be as inclusive um, as, 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 as possible. Um, what inspired me to, 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 to get into astronomy when I grew up, I was, I was always a very curious child. Um, and, 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 and I always wondered where we come from and, and where do we fit into this whole bigger picture of, 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 of creation. Um, and, and, and so those sort of things that, all, that made me start trying to, you know, find out exactly how things work, what makes the universe what it is. Um, and, and as I learned more, I just always wanted to know even more, uh, which is, uh, which, 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 which is something that always really pushed me to say, okay, maybe I should really go into doing this thing that's astronomy and see exactly how far I can get. And even to this day, there's still more questions that I have, and I'm sure more questions that each and every one of us have, and we can all contribute to answering, um, where we fit into this whole big picture of, 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 of of the universe and its origin. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Charles. Uh, that's that's really um, amazing to hear. Um, now we have another um, really important um, and distinguished panelist, Mr. Emeka, Dr. Emeka. Can you also introduce yourself and let us know what inspired you to go into the field of astronomy? Hello, everyone. My name is um, Dr. Mekonyu Wama. I'm from uh, Nigeria. I work with the Nigerian Space Agency. Precisely, my own center is located at the University of Nigeria, Asoka, and it's called the Center for Basic Space Science and Astronomy. Um, what inspired me to go into the field of astronomy is basically the mere fact that when I changed job from uh, one of the centers in the space agency to the center for basic space science and astronomy found out that there are a lot of amazing things happening in astronomy originally i was trained as an atmospheric physicist so but when i interacted with astronomers i observed that there's still a lot of things that need to be studied for instance in recent times we've been studying the atmosphere of mars and uh, we've, tr we've been trying to look at um, how it has been varying for the past um, 45 years. And um, it's really amazing. So that's uh, because I'm in an environment where astronomy is the bed bedrock of the research work people are doing. And also, secondly, uh, in my organization, in my center, is hosting the uh, IAU, uh, uh, one of the uh, IAU nodes, the Office of Astronomy for the West African Regional Office of Astronomy for Development. So as I am interacting with them, I found out that it's a good thing to venture in and also to let the younger ones 
know more about astronomy and get into it. And also, when you look at the development index globally, you find out that the astronomy advanced nations are also economically more advanced and more developed, which means it's something that we Africans need to key into if we must have to develop. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And I completely agree. Uh, um, we definitely need to uh, get into uh, astronomic sciences and we are going to um, understand why uh, with all the presentation that we are going to attend um, or to follow. Um, so I would like to um, ask maybe to Nikita to start with the first presentation um, that will last between like five to ten minutes. And then we will also have another one for Mr. Charles Takarana and uh, probably also for Mr. Emeka before we move into uh, Q and A phases. But please be aware that we are going to consider all your questions. So feel free to use the chat. And uh, we want this session to be super interactive. Please tap into the knowledge. Those person, those panelists are so knowledgeable that you won't miss this opportunity to ask them any question. So please feel free to uh, use the chat and later on we are going to also allow you to unmute yourself and to ask the question. The last thing I want to say before we start is um, some person could not attend at the end um, the quiz competition that we did. We run it for uh, on-site participant already and we are finalizing already the list of winner. However, as I said in the chat, we can still open that for online participants who didn't have the chance to take it to uh, do that from exactly 11 to 11, 10, uh, 20. So please be aware of that. We still want to give you that opportunity to take the quiz um, and we are going to do so uh, using this chat from 11 to 11, 20. Thank you very much, Nikita. You have the floor. Uh, thanks. Thanks so much, Charles. Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah, clearly we can see your screen. Okay. Your All right. Thank you. OK, so um, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about what I do at the Office of Astronomy for Development. Um, so uh, let's just start. Uh, so what we do is we organize uh, hackathons, um, data science, and machine learning hackathons. Um, so you might wonder, you know, what does that have to do with astronomy? And uh, we'll get into that just now. But uh, first, let me just say that this is actually this initiative is a partner between three different uh, partnership between three different institutions, and that's the uh, OAD, um, and then also Dara Big Data. I don't know if some of you might be familiar with um, Dara. It stands for Development in Africa with Radio Astronomy. And DARA Big Data is the sister project of DARA, looking specifically at using or enhancing um, uh, research, uh, data intensive research um, skills in, in Africa. Uh, and also IDEA, which stands for the Inter University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy. And this is a, um, a research cloud facility that's based in Africa, in South Africa. And um, if some of you are aware of uh, the SKA and the Meerkat, uh, which is the SKA precursor telescope, um, it is the computing resources of IDEA that actually um, allows us to, uh, to, to analyze and, and, and process that, that uh, huge amounts of data that's already coming from the Meerkat telescope. So um, what we do, uh, what the, the objective is, um, with these hackathons in, in terms of the Office of Astronomy for Development is to use the uh, knowledge and skills that you, you get uh, when you work in astronomy and, and, and share these um, with, with people from all different uh, backgrounds in, in STEM and um, hopefully allow for them to then broaden their study goals or their career goals. And, and this would then open up a lot of in, uh, opportunities for them in terms of different internship opportunities, different job opportunities. Um, data science uh, and machine learning uh, is, a, is a, you know, a very fast um,
growing field and there are currently more jobs than there are uh, data scientists. And uh, I think that's one of the few fields where you can say that. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's uh, in high demand and wherever you have data, you have data science and opportunities, whether that's in astronomy, other areas of academia, or even in industry, um, such as finances, in the health industry, uh, even in law industries to, to analyze different documents. So it's, it, there's a very wide range of applications uh, for data science. And that's why we feel like um, providing exposure to these skills will really benefit um, those, those who are interested. Okay, so the goal of the hackathons we run, traditionally, I'm not sure if most of you have heard of, of, of hackathons, but, and, and I guess this one, I mean, there's a, the a one associated with, with the event we're talking about now. Um, but traditionally, a hackathon is where you bring together um, people who are very skilled computer scientists or software developers to try and innovate and solve a very hard problem from scratch. And um, with a development hackathon that we run, it's a little bit different. So uh, our goal is to provide exposure to just data science and machine learning techniques by having participants, uh, giving them the opportunity to work with real data on a real world problem um, and get like a hands-on exposure rather than just learning about it. So um, an example of some of the projects that we run. So some of them are astronomy related, but others are related to um, topics that are relevant, particularly uh, you know, for development and, and particularly in Africa, since we've been working with Dara Big Data. Um, so we've looked at, at things like flood detection using um, uh, remote sensing data, that's uh, data from satellites. And we've looked at, uh, so during COVID-19, we, we developed a COVID-19 project where we actually collected tweets um, from Twitter about COVID-19 and then performed, used machine learning to perform a sentiment analysis. Um, and then of course we have more, um, you know, just uh, projects that have broad applications such as scraping images from the web and classifying images as, for example, either, either a cat or a dog or a zebra or a horse, and um, astronomical, uh, astronomy related projects like um, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which is a very fun one that we worked with the Breakthrough Listen. Um, they, they use the Green Bank Telescope uh, to survey the sky and, and hopefully look for um, uh, alien techno signatures. So we have some, you know, it's a very uh, diverse uh, set of projects. Uh, that, that we offer for, for our different hackathons. So uh, just a brief idea of what these hackathons actually entail. Uh, they're very short as hackathons should be they, because they should be very intense and a lot of learning is done over a very short, intense period of time. Although our hackathons being development hackathons are more, uh, they have a, it's a more friendly, supportive environment where we, we have tutors that are available to assist participants. Um, so they run over two to three days. They involve um, talks that are given by uh, invited guests who are uh, from either academia or industry who talk about how they use data science and machine learning in their work um, to, uh, yeah, how they apply it in their work. So to give a perspective of, of, of how, you know, broad uh, the applications are. And then um, we also encourage learning soft skills that are very critical, whether you're going to work in academia or, or in industry, which is uh, things like teamwork, uh, leadership, uh, presentation skills, etc. And um, so far since 2020, uh, despite the pandemic, we have run hackathons um, in Zambia and then as well as uh, Ghana, Mozambique, Kenya and Mauritius. We've also had two virtual hackathons which were open to countries from anywhere in Africa. Uh, so it's just some pictures of uh, some of our past um, hackathons. We had one in Mozambique, which is actually the first hackathon that was run uh, in a language um, uh, other than English. So the, this hackathon was run entirely in Portuguese. The tutorials for the projects were in Portuguese. Um, 
and uh, the, the speakers, uh, this, all the talks as well. Um, we had one in Kenya, Big Data Kenya, last year, and uh, the Technical University of Kenya. Uh, we had, at, in March this year, we had a, um, a, a all-women event for open to women from, from across uh, Africa because uh, women are very under underrepresented, not only in STEM, but uh, as uh, data science as well. I think it's globally, the number is about 20 to 30 percent. Um, of the field uh, is made up of, of women. So we wanted to encourage more women and we had a panel of really amazing uh, um, African women data scientists. Um, and then this, this was followed by a, a really uh, interesting hackathon. And most uh, recently we had an event in Mauritius, uh, Big Data Mauritius in June this year. Um, and you can see uh, teams working together, the hackathons uh, you, you work in um, teams of four or five, and we provide tutorials that, uh, you know, so you're not starting from scratch. There is some code um, to work with uh, and, and guide you uh, along with the tutors. Okay, so that's basically what I do and what uh, these development hackathons are about. And now what we are doing is we are sharing all the resources that we've created for this project. Um, and this will hopefully enable anyone uh, around the world who would like to organize their own hackathon at their own school or their own university or in their community um, in their, at their institution. So we are making all these resources such as the projects, the tutorials, the data, um, a list of you know what is required for a hackathon, guidelines on how to run a hackathon, and then uh, training resources for tutors so that if you're organizing a hackathon, you can find tutors and resources to train them are already available, um, like uh, training videos for, for that are relevant to each of the projects. And these are available currently um, at the uh, Astronomy for Development uh, website, Astro for Dev, and Organize Your Own Hackathon. But uh, in a few weeks' time, we will actually be launching a new website um, called Hack for Dev, and um, Hack for Dev is actually uh, a project, and and uh, the OED, Dara Big Data, even AFAS that Charles will tell you about, are all partners um, of this this project called Hack Hackathons for Development, and um, so everything will be migrated there. So if you want to keep an eye on future hackathons or the resources that are available to learn uh, about data science or to organize your own hackathon please keep an eye out for their website that will be um, launched on the 6th of December. Um, thank you very much. Great, thank you very much uh, for that presentation. It is really um, awesome to um, get to know a little bit more what you are doing and, and that's really cool. I think a lot of person, um, me including, would like to be more involved actually. Um, so. Mr. Charles, please feel free to also um, um, start your presentation. And um, after that, we are going to uh, move to Dr. Emeka. Hi, can you see my screen already? Um, I think it's loading. Yeah, we can see your screen, perfect. Okay. Um, hi everyone, um, as was mentioned earlier, and my name is Dr. Charles Takalana from the African Astronomical Society, and I'm just going to talk to you about uh, astronomy in Africa, the existing platforms uh, for astronomy research and development. Um, so I'm just going to start really at the basics as to what astronomy is. I'm sure that some of you already never have, have, have a good idea from the activities during the week. So astronomy looks at how we study, look, looks at basically at studying the universe at, at, at the celestial objects and the processes that govern um, uh, these, these, these objects and how we observe them. Um, and astronomers use uh, what you call electromagnetic radiation, which is emitted by these sources, to, 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 and, 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 and that's how we study them. So they emit radiation in different frequencies or, or wavelengths. Um, so um, studying these objects help us understand our place in the universe much better. So I've just got an image of what the electromagnetic spectrum is and basically all the different instruments that observe it at these different frequencies. And just the picture at, at the bottom is just shows um, instruments that are some 
on the, that are that are on the African continent that actually observe um, um, these uh, uh, celestial objects um, in the in 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 in, in these uh, different frequencies. So we we what's our place in the universe? So all of us live live in this beautiful planet that we call Earth. We we, we belong to a solar system and we belong in this. Uh, uh, beautiful galaxy, which is the Milky Way galaxy, and and just the image of the Milky Way galaxy is that we are just a tiny dot on the Milky Way galaxy, and this Milky Way galaxy belongs to to a family of different galaxies, and galaxies come in different forms, shapes, and sizes, and then all of these then belongs to groups and clusters, and uh, and and then we go we move into what we call the observable universe, and then there's further more in what is in in in, in the, there's further in the universe other objects and, and, and things that we have not yet observed or that we do not know about. So astronomy in Africa, right? So these are just some of the facilities that are on the African continent. Um, and in the, in, the, in the last two decades, astronomy on the African continent has been growing. There have been new facilities and, and observatories that have been uh, coming up. And this is also part of the motivation that said we need an, an, an African astronomical society that looks at how we as professional astronomers can advance this field of, of, of astronomy and also look at how we can try to get as many countries on the African continent involved in, 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 in astronomy as possible. Um, in, in addition to this growth of, of astronomy infrastructure and, 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 and research, there's this uh, big meeting that's taking place in Africa for the first time, which is the IU General Assembly, which is taking place in 2024. And this is going to be for the first time in the history of the IU, which is over 100 years, that this event is held on the African continent. And this, this, is, a, this is a moment for all of us to really be proud of. And part of moving towards 2024 is how we can have more African astronomers and also have them contribute more and have the voice of Africa more in the global astronomy community. So there have been various astronomy projects um, that, 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 are, that, that have taken off. And one very big one is this SKA telescope or this SKA observatory that's going to be hosted between South Africa and Australia. South Africa will be hosting the part which is called the SKA MID. Um, and in addition to this, um, what, when, when, when South Africa bid for this instrument, it's that it would be an African bid, which means that other countries would also benefit from, from this uh, hosting of, of this big uh, in, in instrument in, in, in South Africa. And therefore, there are nine um, partner countries, some of them which Nikita also worked with in, 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 in Dara. And there's a number of other uh, institutions that are involved in this big uh, 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 project. Um, so just where we are uh, in terms of radio astronomy on the African continent, South Africa and Africa currently hosts what is the most powerful radio telescope in the world in its frequency range, which is the Meerkat telescope. Um, and there are other in instruments that are still under construction, and some of them are, 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 are still in the planning stages. And this includes um, the HILA, which is the Hydrogen Epoch of Ionization Array, and the, and the HIREX telescope, uh, which looks to study the very early, early period um, of, 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 of the universe. Um, part of the avian project, which I spoke about in the previous slide, which which, which looks at uh, having radio astronomy on the, on the African continent, one of the of the of of, of the radio antennas outside of, outside of South Africa has been launched already, and this is um, the Ghana uh, radio dish, and it's already doing some observation. And of course, even with the Hyrax uh, telescope, there's also going to be involvement from other African countries that are going to be hosting what's called outrigger. Uh, stations of of the of the of the instruments and then and, and that's and and the, and the map there at the bottom just shows the countries that are going to be hosting some of these outriggers um and many many of you might have seen in in recent months the beautiful picture of the center of the milky way sorry yeah of of of, of the milky way galaxy um which 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 was taken by the event horizon telescope and this is just um this is just uh, an, 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 another instrument that that has been uh, developed, uh, which is the, the, the Africa Millimeter Telescope, and it's going to be constructed in Namibia. This is an image that was taken by the Meerkat Telescope. This is the most clearest image taken by a radio telescope of the center of 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 the of 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 our galaxy, and I think that this is something that, as Africans, we should really be proud of. And also, and 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 also, it's a sign that we are a globally competitive um, astronomy and science community, 
and and should be an in, an, an inspiration to each one of us, including students and 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 and, and, and others coming up in the future. Um, in astronomy, as I mentioned, we we be observed in multi wavelength in in, in in a whole range of wavelengths and frequencies, um, and some of these projects are. Uh, are all over the continent. There is the there is the Okimidan Observatory, which is in Morocco, which also participated in the Trappist observations, which discovered a planetary system which which, which was never observed before. In South Africa, we host the largest uh, uh, optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, which is the Southern African Large Telescope. Um, Ethiopia, Egypt, Algeria, Burkina Faso also host and are developing their own observatories as well and 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 institutions in the African continent both in the north and the south are participating in 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 in, in what's called the km3 net um, observatory and of course there's the gamma ray community as well which includes the the Fermi Lodge community which participates in or, or, or where or where Africa participates through the SA gamma consortium and also uh, Namibia hosts uh, the most powerful Sharonkov telescope in the world currently until the CTA is, is completed. So I'm just going to look at careers in astronomy. And um, this, is, this is a picture for, from the two conferences of the African Astronomical Society uh, that we had in, in, in person or, or, or in hybrid. And, a, and, 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 and there are people that do a whole range of different things. There are professional astronomers that actually study and observe. Or some of them are even theorists. We've got, we've got our students, we've got government officials, we've got key stakeholders, and we have amateur astronomers. So there's a place for everyone in astronomy. Sorry. Right, so uh, studies and careers, study and a career in astronomy. Uh, so, um, so, so of course in school you'll need to study mathematics or physical sciences. And um, going into university, you'd have to look at having getting your bachelor's degree in, in, in science, looking starting particularly mathematics or physics. And of course, um, astronomy is also open to, 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 to engineers and computer scientists, which are very important people that actually make the observations uh, possible. Um, and in, in, in your postgraduate study, you look at getting an honors uh, MSc to become a professional astronomer. Finally, you'd have to get your PhD. I've just put here a list of, of, of institutions that you know across the African continent in one way or, one way or another contribute to having a stream that can come into astronomy. And of course, you can study a BSc in, 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 in physics and mathematics at any institution, and then look at, at, at furthering your, 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 some of your studies as well. Um, at the bottom here, I just have uh, some of the institutions that also provide uh, scholarships and opportunities for, 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 for students on the African continent. To, to come into astronomy and, 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 and space related, related fields. These are some of the two projects that are also taking place um, or, or, or that, are currently, that are currently running on, on the continent. The first one it's, 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 is, is EFIPS, which, look, which is the African Initiative for Planetary and Space Sciences. Um, this looks basically um, at a sustainable scientific and higher education strategy for developing planetary and space science in Africa. There is also the Pan-African Planetary Space Science Network, uh, which uh, provides scholarship for African, net for, for, for African nationals to study astronomy, as astrophysics, space, and planetary sciences. So I'm just going to now go quickly to the organization that I represent, which is the African Astronomical Society. As I mentioned, we are a Pan-African Society for Astronomers. Uh, we are governed by a constitution, and our members are, are, the, are the highest reporting body of the institution. Um, our vision is to create a globally competitive uh, and collaborative society in, in Africa, and also to collaborate with countries outside of Africa. And, 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 and our mission is to be the voice of astronomy in Africa and address the challenges that we face as a continent through the use of astronomy. Um, so the Secretariat of IFES is hosted in South Africa, uh, thanks to the funding that we get for the Department of Science and Innovation in South Africa that allows us to do this work throughout the, 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 the entire continent. And we are based at the South African Astronomical Observatory, which is also in the Office of Astronomy for Development, where Nikita is based is all, is, is, is as well. Again, Vision 2024 um, is looking at how we can uh, 
we, we, we can grow astronomy on the continent uh, uh, by 2024 or and, and, and have a lasting legacy beyond the hosting of the General Assembly. And the vision looks at different uh, different areas, which include human capital development, infrastructure, science, uh, having opportunities for 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 Africans in astronomy, uh, uh, funding, and a legacy beyond 2024. So, what are the objectives of the African Astronomical Society? So, we look at strengthening the teaching of STEM in in, in schools, uh, and through and through the use of 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 of, of public of public outreach. Uh, we, we, we also look at using astronomy to attract more youth into, into STEM fields. Uh, we look at increasing um, um, African astronomers on the continent as, all, as well as also attracting astronomers from outside of Africa to come and work in South Africa. And we also look at uh, inspiring more underrepresented groups, including women, to come into the field of astronomy, working together with government and intergovernmental organizations. Of course, we look at how through our objectives, we can contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So AFIS is divided into various number of committees that that look at uh, that, that 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 look at various aspects of of astronomy. And I'm just going to start now with AFIS Science and some of our flagship projects that we are currently running. Um, one of the flagships that we've been looking into is to developing a high performance computing network to support the astronomy community on the African continent looking at a network of uh, optical telescopes, which I'm going to talk about shortly, and also looking at a radio, an African radio astronomy network. So this is beyond the AVN project. As you know, the AVN project focuses only on, an, on, on a number of African countries, but we are looking at how we can also get more and more African countries um, into, um, as, uh, in, into radio astronomy. And partnering with the OED and the GA2024, we are looking at establishing astronomy hubs on the continent. So as I mentioned, the African Integrated Observation System is going to be expanding the intelligent observatory concept at the South African Astronomical Observatory, where um, we where these telescopes on the on the plateau in, in Sutherland are all networked to to, to one another and, and, and are all remotely uh, operated and they can all observe a, a single source at, at at the same time and, and can also provide follow-up. So, so, so we're trying to, to, to expand this concept to the whole of the African continent so that we can get more and more observatories involved. And also if we can get uh, some new observatories running as well as reviving some of the old observatories like the Roti telescope that we are currently working on in Namibia. Um, so what are the aims of, of, of this African Integrated Observation System is to develop collaborations within Africa and globally in transient astronomy and, 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 and time domain studies. It's to motivate and support the development of new facilities in, the, in, 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 in other African countries and to support human capital development programs on the continent. We also run um, some, some, some funding projects as well that looks at advancing early career astronomers in astronomy. And one of this is the Seed Research Grant, which 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 supports MSc, PhD, and postdoctoral uh, uh, fellows in 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 their studies. Um, and when what we do is that we we provide a grant that you can use towards your research. We also have the MSc and PhD prize that that's that's awarded to MSc and PhD uh, students that uh, that have uh, submitted their the PhD thesis and 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 and, and, and have been seen to have. A significant uh, impact in the field. We are developing what's the, what's the uh, what's the AFIS portal, and this is going to take stock of all the publications that have been published by African astronomers. And this is something that we're looking to launch uh, next year. So all of you can just look out for that. And this is also part of the portal and and the things that you'll be able to do to find information as to where you can get opportunities, uh, the various institutions on the on the continent, and 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 and. And, and projects and, and other information on astronomy. We also do outreach at AFIS and, and, and this is just a, a, a map of some of the of, 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 of some of the outreach astronomy activities that are on the continent. And we also look at supporting um, all of these uh, outreach activities on the continent by, by providing a material, also translating material into different languages on the African continent since we speak a whole lot of different languages on the continent. Uh, and we provide uh, guidelines for hands-on activities as well. So AFIS Science and Outreach, we are also looking at an affordable, affordable planetarium model because it's very difficult for, 
for 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 institutions and organizations on the continent to acquire planetaria. So we're trying to look at how we can lower the cost and even sponsor some of these planetaria. We have the African Network for Women in Astronomy. This looks at how we can promote and strengthen female participation in 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 astronomy and related sciences on the continent. You can find out more information on the website that I've provided uh, there. Um, the still the African Network of Women in Astronomy. We've got the African Science Stars publication. Which we, uh, which we, which is issued on a quarterly basis on the African continent, and this just captures astronomy on the continent and and what what the current activities are. And if you'd like to be receiving the publications in 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 hard copy, you can just let me know, and then we can arrange that for you as well. We've got the African Planetary Association, which looks at creating a network of planetary on the continent, and also supporting us in our affordable affordable planetary model. Next year is our annual conference, uh, which is going to take place from the 13th to the 17th of March. And we, we would like to, to, to encourage students to, 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 to register and submit abstracts to present during the conference. And um, there are other whole range of, of initiatives that we're running. We, we've got an initiative that's looking at supporting um, in institutions through supplying a Galileo scope. So if you're interested in getting a Galileo scope for your organization or your association, you can just write to us and then uh, we'll give you the instructions on, 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 on how you can motivate for that. We've developed an Astronomy in Africa brochure, which, 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 which summarizes um, astronomy on the continent. And AFOS is now looking at how we can develop our own astronomy schools and is looking at an astronomy school uh, policy framework. Uh, we collaborate with uh, Dara Big Data, which Nikita just uh, presented about on, on, on this great initiative, which is Act for Death. Um, and they are, then they're, they're all, all, they're, they're, there's other collaborators that are, that, 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 that are involved here as well. And this is something that we're really grateful for. And, 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 and one of our first activities is taking place next year, just after, just after our, our AFIS annual conference, which is the hackathon that anyone from across the continent can apply for. So thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, we really appreciate all the content and I'm so happy to um, be able somehow to contribute to add a dot in Cameroon because when you show the map, I saw that uh, it was kind of empty in the Central Africa. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we are doing, contributing to outreach, uh, awareness, and I hope um, everyone as I am doing now is learning a lot. Thank you very much for all um, that element of information. Um, now we are going to move to Dr. Emeka. Um, uh, Dr. Emeka, are you um, ready maybe to share a screen or to, uh, if not, we are going, we, we can move to the uh, panel discussion directly. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Let me share my screen. Great, I hope great. you can hear me. So okay. Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Okay. Can you see my screen? Um, it's loading. Yeah, we can see. We, we can see your screen. Now. Okay. Maybe you can just put. Maybe you can just put in the full mode, like a presentation mode. I think. Um, because now we can see also the um. Okay. Let me, let me stop sharing and change the mode I shared it with. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm. Let me see. Okay, let me put it in. Just to... Is it better now? Um, still not, but I hope maybe maybe you can go like that. I think. Okay. But no, it's, it's still not uh, in the presentation mode. It's... I don't know why uh, because I, I can see that you click on. Maybe it's depend on the tab that you shared. So um, you can share the tabs in the full mode. I've done the. I've put it in the presentation mode already. So. 
Okay. Anyway, uh, I think we can go like that. That's perfect. Okay, so um, thank you, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Meko Nwoma, like I introduced earlier on, and uh, Charles has um, touched a bit about career. Though in this presentation, I will give you one through how to make some career um, choices when it comes to space science and generally. So I hope that um, the audience in this meeting will benefit from my presentation. And also by way of um, maybe adding on more information, Charles um, put up Obafemi Awolo University as where they do astronomy in Nigeria, unless they started it newly, but um, there are a couple of other universities like uh, University of Nigeria, Asuka, where they've been doing astronomy for the past um, uh, 30 years and other universities, uh, Federal University of Technologies and a host of a lot of them that are participating in the PAPSIM project. Okay, so we are going to look at understanding career planning, exposure to various career options and guides to effective and meaningful career choices. Okay, here is just a rundown of the of the uh, presentation. I, this is normally the talk I give to uh, students who are uh, still in search of careers. So I hope um, the right audience are here. Okay, so career is an occupation undertaken for a significant period of a person's life with opportunities for progress and. Um, it involves a lot of decisions and uh, processes of development. So it is not something that you jump into accidentally. It's something that you plan for and work towards it. And also, um, the plan is such that uh, it guides a, a person. So it has to be preserved. So you have to set out the goals and you have to understand where you are heading to, basically. Um, in most cases, a lot of um, students find it difficult to choose a career at some point in their life. Either they are considering the employability or they are considering the environment where they are found in, but then we run through and you see some of the things that we should guide someone to choose a career he or she will be proud of in life. Now, there are 1,001 career options, and um, some people are accountants, some are chemists, some are computer analysts, economists, educationists, engineers, uh, medi uh, medical physicians, physicists, uh, space scientists, and a whole lot of them. Now, when, it come, when you come to space sciences, you have... Um, mm, Dr. Emeka? instrumentation instruments being used for research and uh, you have aerospace and aeronautic engineers these are people these people are all found in space science computer engineers data analysts atmospheric scientists etc and so many others now yeah. one thing i want to uh, state here is that can you hear me yeah we can hear you clearly sorry uh, sorry to interrupt you i'm very sorry for that it's just that we can just see the first light since then i don't know if you are moving the slides since then i'm not. moving the slides i don't know what, what oh no happen. no no we, we can just see like the first or, light since then or you can hear but, me maybe you can hear you yeah you can hear you can. maybe i can share the slide after the presentation all right just, Perfect. Uh, yeah nice thank you or let me stop and reshare. Let me stop and reshare and see maybe it's network that stopped the whole thing. Just a minute. Okay. I hope I hope it will go this time. Yeah, hopefully. And if it doesn't work, maybe you can share either a tap or the a windows, like the full windows, or maybe the entire screen so that it's depend on, on your but yeah. Yeah, I, can you see the screen at this point? Yeah, um, you can see the screen, yeah. Choosing a career? Yeah, choosing a career. Okay, so let me, it may be the network. Let me go back a bit. Okay, I've talked about um, what career um, is all about. 
and all so, the career options. Can you see the screen? You can see the screen, but only the slide um, choosing your career. So I, as I assume that you went back, uh, I think we okay, don't just, exactly. just, just give me a minute. Let me do something on my slide and... Uh, okay let me just talk because i don't know i don't okay, know just that's... a few slides just a few okay. slides yeah so um there are rules that guys some want to choose a perfect career now these rules are such that um one has to understand the career he or she has in mind what does it entail okay i want to be an astronomer what does being an astronomer entail that is the first thing you have to do a research about the career you want to venture into the second one is um you get advice from people at times when you, you take students on excursion uh, you find out that at that point they ask several questions uh maybe they ask the the professionals in the field where they are visiting several questions to know more about the type of job that they do there these are part of the things that someone needs to do uh, get advice get information from people who are already in the field and also one after getting this information one need to thoughtfully thoughtfully think about what he or she has garnered has gathered from the excursion or from the advice he has maybe um, uh, people has uh, given to him or her. And then the most important also amongst them is one need to be passionately in love with his choice. Uh, a common adage says a, a bad workman quarrels with his tools. If you are not passionately in love with the career, you are about to go into then it means you will be complaining at every point in time and that will not go well it means that um, you won't put in your best in that in that in that uh, career you won't develop it and you also won't advance it then the sixth one is that one need to develop it and make it meaningful how do you develop a career and make it meaningful by working towards the things that will uh make you achieve those objectives for instance charles talked about uh, uh students doing sciences chemistry physics and all the rest of them if you must be an astronomer for instance or a physicist there are some subjects you must have to do while you are still at the high school chemistry physics uh, mathematics they are there they are essential so one must have to work towards developing it doing something meaningful or at the postgraduate level you want to be an astronomer or a space scientist and you want to be uh, you want to do the core research you must have a background knowledge and which implies that at your undergraduate you must have done uh, uh, courses like chemistry physics uh, mathematics biology for those who want to be astrobiologists and what have you and then also one don't need to be afraid oftentimes when you encounter uh, some students they will tell you oh i don't want to do science because of physics i don't want to do science because of mathematics and a lot of uh, when you also encounter maybe some medical students they will tell you i'm just reading for physics and mathematics to pass so that i go to the next level so one thing basic is that one need not to be afraid of a career he or she wants to choose. You just open up your mind and then uh, brace up to take the challenges. Then there are certain factors one need to consider while choosing career. One, the career you are choosing must match your values. Your choice should be able to survive a fast in a fast economy. The economy of the world is always changing. So while choosing a career, consider a, a, a career that you can easily switch into another uh, job opportunity. For instance, most astronomers, if they are not working in an um, observatory, some of them are 
good data analyst, data scientist. So it means that they can fit in either here or there. And then also careers should be realistic. You don't choose a career that is unrealistic, like building, um, you want to travel, maybe you want to indulge yourself in intergalactic travel. You know, for now, it is not realistic. Now, the career also you choose must match your interest. So it is very, very important. And then one should also have the requisite skills. You don't jump into something you cannot do. You want to be a, a, a scientist, you don't have background knowledge in mathematics. You don't have background knowledge in physics. You don't have background knowledge in chemistry. You know, it is not possible. Those requisite skills that are attached to the career of interest must be there with you. So you must work towards acquiring those skills. Now, for every career, there are some things you have to look out for. Now, physical requirements. There are physical requirements for every career choice. <clears throat> Not everybody has the physical requirements to do all types of jobs. So we have to look at the physical requirements and then the geographical requirements. If someone is um, maybe hydrophobic, you don't need to venture into becoming a sailor because you your career will always take you into the waters. Or if someone is um, afraid of heights, you don't want you you don't think about going in as a as a pilot. You also look at the stress level. What is the stress level? Some human beings cannot take. Uh, we human beings don't take stress at the same level. Some people take longer stress. Some people can stand for a very long time. Some people can sit down for a very long time. Some people cannot sit down for a very long time. So these are some of the things one needs to consider in choosing a career. Now that Mr. John is in this career, I want to jump in. There are certain things that Mr. John is enduring in that career. Try and understand what that person or the professionals are enduring to see if you can also endure. Can you sit all night maybe to crack a code? If for instance, you want to be an astronomer, can you sit all night maybe to read long uh, volume of uh, papers? You know, I'm just giving instances. So these are some of the things one need to consider while choosing a career. And then the income requirement. Uh, for instance, um, if you want to be a millionaire, there are certain jobs you cannot take. That's just the obvious truth. If you want to be a millionaire, you don't need to work for government. You need to be in a private sector. So if you want to be an astronomer, you have to zero up your mind that, one, I'm not going to be the top richest people in the world. It's not possible. At least in the interim, you have to go into business. So what are the income requirements? So you have to get uh, know all these things. And then opportunities and benefits attached therein. So there are opportunities, there are benefits. Uh, most often, astronomers who are maybe basically in observational astronomy move from one place to the other. Maybe from your present location, you go to an observatory to observe and maybe move from one place to the other, present com uh, go to conferences and all the rest of them. And then they also you look at the expected sociability level. What class of people are you going to mingle with? So you, these are some of the things you consider. So in conclusion, we at this point we normally ask the students to stop everything they are doing and maybe close their eyes and picture into the future to think about what they see themselves how they see themselves in the near future three to ten years and then at this point also we ask them what you are doing presently is it in line with what you want to be in future now if what someone is doing at the moment does not propel him or her or will not propel him or her to achieve the dream he or she has in the near future it means one is not in the right career or one is not in the right direction so at this point the students will now advise themselves on 
maybe whether they are there or not, and then maybe uh, do everything. I think um, uh, we, I norm conclude my presentation by saying that the career you choose now, nurture and develop, will always prepare you to the future you dream today. It is never too late to start thinking about the future. Choose your career wisely, own it, and it is yours tomorrow. Thank you, and I'm sorry that the, you couldn't see the slide, but I'd be willing to share it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's that's really inspiring, and and yeah. So um, I hope I hope people not that down, but I'm so also super happy because this is being recorded, so at least people can watch it again and again. And uh, and yeah. So thank you very much for all those presentation. Um, um, I was asking to the on-site, um, um, I will say, team, um, and saying that I want to acknowledge the effort and contribution of Monique Lagood from Eureka Joe, the CEO of Eureka Joe, um, running the acting, sp acting space hackathon on-site, but also Aurelien Bono, uh, who is the main point of contact, um, making the link between the online and the on-site um, participant. So I hope I hope um, everything is running smoothly on-site, and um, it would have been nice to like um, uh, have a visual on the on-site participant too. However, let's move forward um, and discuss a little bit about some of the points that you 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 mentioned during your presentation, and that need to be um, kind of further uh, developed. Um, before I jump into that, I saw one question into the chat that I would like to take. Um, Brian asks, please, how do astronomers do locate faster in the night sky precisely? So um, if any of you would like to answer to this question, please feel free um, to jump in. Sorry, what, what was the question again, Charles? I, I didn't get some part of it clearly. Yeah, he, uh, Brian is asking, how do astronomers do locate far star in the night sky, precisely? Yeah, um, so, so normally we would know where, where the star is relative to, to, to our to our location of, 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 of observation and, then, and, and, and therefore we'll be able to then track it. And I hope that, and and this if it's a it's, if it's a known star, then but then of course they are known, and then they are known stars, and then some of these, uh, which are unknown, we 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 normally just 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 find as we are observing or, or drifting through the sky. So. Um, yeah, yeah. If you feel to add, add, add to that by yeah. So just is how you would locate something on Earth with like a latitude and longitude. Um, you know, uh, relative to the the equator of the Earth. Similarly, with space, we have a celestial equator. It's not the same um, as the uh, the. It's not the same angle as the um, Earth equator, but um, it, there's a celestial equator, and um, we use something called uh, right ascension and declination, so R A and dec, and um, RA is basically like longitude and declination is like uh, gives us the latitude on the sky. So each point has a specific, uh, just like how on Earth each spot, um, place on Earth will have a specific, specific uh, geo uh, location with latitude and longitude. Similarly, um, on the night sky, we have each object will have its own uh, particular right ascension and declination. So. Uh, if you want to program a telescope to look in a certain place, you can enter the right ascension and declination, and and it will go it will go there. Or similarly, if you uh, I mean, vice, alternatively, if you find the source uh, and and, and you, it's interesting, then you note down its right ascension and declination, and then you know where it is. Amazing. Um, I think. I think that answer probably to the question. Um, but Brian, feel free to um, either maybe raise your hand so that uh, we can give you the floor or type, um, develop a little bit the question into the chat if you would like to have more element of answer. Um, 
I want also to open kind of discussion on with another topic. Um, Dr. Emeka talked about the passion of the uh, of the field and being able to love what you are doing, not just following other person. And one thing I know um, that is kind of really related to astronomy is um, the condition of life in on uh, I would say on another planet, potential planet or Earth-like planet. So um, one question I want to ask to all the panelists is what condition are necessary for life, for example, and how is it related to astronomy? Okay. Um, for life to exist, I will answer from the point of view of um, a physicist, not a biologist. I have um, some of my colleagues who are in astrobiology who have been doing some studies on um, on life in extra in other planets like Mars. Okay, so from the point of view of an atmospheric scientist, first of all, for life to exist in every environment, there must be oxygen, for instance. And also, the atmosphere must be conducive. For instance, um, drawing from the research we, we are just concluding on the atmosphere of Mars with regards to uh, the opacity of Mars, we found out that the, op the atmosphere of Mars has a lot of dust. And by implication, it means uh, one, if you are on the surface of Mars, you need to cover your nose, your nose waste. So for you to survive on Mars. And also it means that the, the synthetically available solar radiation, which helps in plant growth, may not be in a very great abundance on Mars because of the opacity of Mars. So the atmosphere is a bit covered with dust. And then also, if you are looking at Mars, for instance, maybe missions to Mars and all the rest of them, you have to look at if you must have to put up solar panels on Mars, maybe certain places may not be very conducive for it. So for life to exist the way it is on Earth, for us to adapt to other planets the way it is, the way we are adapting on Earth, it implies that the conditions available on Earth must also be the same on the surface of Mars, on the surface of any other planet. Be that as it may, um, I, I will not say that life does not exist on those planets. The only thing is that it may not be in the form we already know them. We may be looking in the wrong direction. For instance, um, we may be looking for human beings breathing with their nose while it may be the other way around i'm not saying this is exclusive we we have seen that maybe on our own planet the fishes in the water they breed and survive in the water why we human beings cannot survive in the water and some other animals the amphibians can live both on land and on water so it is also possible that there are species of being in these other planets that are all surviving there, that have their own adaptation strategy, which is quite different from the way we are surviving here. But the key thing is that for us to survive on the surface of any other planet, it means that the conditions on Earth must also be replicated on those planets. If you look at some movies like The Martian, we see what really happened on on, in that movie and how the man was able to survive. So he wasn't just in the open, he was in a conditioned environment for him to survive for that long time. I think that's the what I can say there. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's 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 really clear and and uh, whether it is from um, an, a physical um, environment point of view or biological, 
um, we can see the link. But now another question that can help also um, other person like me, for example, to also understand uh, how they can contribute to all of these. So another question I would like to ask maybe to Nikita or to Charles Takalana is, um, why should the um, talent of the continent care about astronomy? Um, I, 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 we understood already like why it is, is it important um, and what we can do as an astronomer during your presentation. But um, why, why is it important for Africa, basically? So, um, yeah. I think, Charles, I'll let, I'll let you take that one. Let's we'll start with that one. Yes. Look, uh, astronomy goes beyond just studying the stars and 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 and, and, and exploring the universe. It makes life better on on our planet as well, right? So. How does it make life better on our planet as well? You know, I think all of us always, if, all, in fact, right now, most of us are probably connected to this thing that we call Wi-Fi. We all enjoy it so much, right? I mean, able to connect with one another and, and reach out to one another and, and stay connected as a global community. It's just one of the spin-offs of things that came out of astronomy. So as we study the universe, we push the limits of technology. We push the limits of what is known and what is possible. And by us doing that, there are some spin-offs that come off from astronomy, which is exactly why being in astronomy does not mean that you have to be an astronomer. You can be an engineer, you can be a computer scientist, you can be in, 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 in education and, and in other different areas of, 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 of astronomy. Astronomy is in itself multidisciplinary, and that is how I think science should be, in that you, 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 are, you are able to reap benefits that can that can contribute to the betterment of the of 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 the human race right so yeah that's just my take on that yeah thank you very much i completely agree like pushing the limit and also the spin of technologies that are a, a critical component um and now i want to take another part of the question to kind of relate astronomy and uh, space sciences in general um so what is the link between astronomy and space as we can imagine that uh, with, um, with like a satellite and, and rocket? You see like astronomy is more like telescope and some um, ground instrument. Uh, we saw like some recent um, big achievement from NASA uh, with the James Webb telescope. But what is the real link between space science and astronomy? And at the same time, talking about maybe uh, spin, spinning and spin-off technologies, what is the um, advice or how do you think it should be communicated to um, people like uh, uh, entrepreneurs, for example, or, or maybe decision makers or investors? So yeah. If you have any any idea, uh, that would be amazing to hear. Too. Any of the panelists, actually, so the, the question is really open. Okay. Um, first of all, when you the first question is what is space science? What is space science? I think, from my own view, astronomy is um, part of space science. It's an integral part of space science. And um, the question you raised, how do you communicate this to decision makers, policy makers? That's a very critical one because oftentimes when you present the topic of astronomy to maybe policy makers, funders, the first question they will ask you is, how will this astronomy bring food on the table? Okay. Why should we invest in astronomy instead of in healthcare? That is the most of the questions they normally ask. The obvious truth is that, like Charles rightly said, astronomy uh, pushes technology to its limits. Okay, and the most important thing one should communicate is that the spin-off from astronomy is the most important thing. 
we are talking about internet i'm talking to you from now and you are talking to me we've never met before we've never seen each other but we are hearing ourselves these are the spin-offs from astronomy they sit down from wherever they are they make phone calls these are the spin-offs from astronomy some time ago um one of our engineers thought about developing an instrument that will help in irrigating farm using telemetry and they were they successfully did that and they had a irrigation small irrigation portable irrigation systems that you can mount in your farms and if you take soil temperature soil uh, moisture content and at appropriate time uh, irrigate the farm for you and give you feedback these are spin off some astronomy so astronomy on its own is not exclusively uh, the the will i say the output they may not really appreciate it looking at the galaxies and all the rest of them but then the knowledge acquired in the process of maybe looking at this thing is very very important in national development like i said earlier on if you at the map of i don't have that map here if you look at the map of countries that are developed in the world market anywhere they are all advanced in astronomy look at the americans look at the the english people look at the swedish people the europeans they are advanced in astronomy that is why you look at them they can give you precisely maybe pre precision technology ai all of them these are things you that spin out from astronomy maybe the forecasting if you can stay here and look into the sky and know actually the position of this of the star and get information about it you can accurately predict certain things with high precision predict the economy so these are spin off from astronomy i think this is the area we as africans should uh, talk to policy makers not just to look at astronomy as just looking into the sky but as also the technology you acquire in the process of looking into the sky can be employed in other spheres of life and it will be very very beneficial and also citing these examples for them thank you thank you thank you to you uh, i don't know if any of the other panelists would like to add something uh, we have like 10 minutes left for our panel discussion um but yeah if um, maybe charles or nikita you would like to add something on that question that would be amazing to also hear how are you communicating these topics to the decision makers to um the policy makers and also the uh, entrepreneur for example Yeah, so um, as, the, as the African Astronomical Society, from our side, what we do is that we try to involve as, as, as many stakeholders as, 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 positive, as, 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 as possible. Because one way that we really look at it is that astronomy is a, is, is, a, is a field where we sort of all need one another. We need one another in the, within the field. We need others from outside the field. And... And, and and all of that even goes into motivating for funding for us to do the astronomy, for us to make astronomy possible. Um, and myself, uh, you know, I, I, I found it very beneficial in that at some point I was I was involved in, in, in policy. And, you know, I actually got an opportunity to sort of find out the policy that goes into, into making astronomy uh, possible. And it, we found that it's very difficult to 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 you know convince government and and funders that um, what the benefits of astronomy are, especially in a continent like 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 Africa, where where the thing that mostly everyone is focused about is how we address poverty and 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 and, and hunger. And where we realize that we speak to them is where we show them what the benefits of doing astronomy are in addressing all of those challenges. And we find that astronomy has got a very good impact and 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 and, and very good potential. And which is what makes offices like the Office of Astronomy for Development something that's that's very important. And it's also made made that even within FS, what we do with within our 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 project at the core of it is about using astronomy to make the continent a better place for for everyone yeah 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, Nikita, Dr. Nikita, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, Nick and Charles have made, you know, most of the really great points to answer the question. Um, I'd just like to add that uh, I think, you know, astronomy has the potential to um, also just inspire uh, many of the young minds to, to come into science and to come into STEM um, and, and, and increase, their, you know, better the, the knowledge economy of Africa. Also, the skills that you obtain if you if you study as an astronomer, um, like data science that I spoke about, you know, it's it's, it's extremely transferable to, to other fields. So, um, I or Charles, uh, you know, Amika, as a, a trained astronomer, can also very easily work in other fields in the industry um, and, and contribute to other areas. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, before I end this panel discussion, I would like to give uh, all of you, or each of you, um, the floor again to kind of let us know for you what are the um, next kind of, um, I would say, save the date that we need to keep, like next activities. Maybe you are hosting like hackathon, as we saw uh, on your presentation, for example. Uh, some upcoming activities and some uh, PhD opportunities. So just briefly reminding us what um, is what are a few things we need to keep in mind in the upcoming, I would say, days, so that even in the uh, report or e in the email that we are going to send, we can still integrate that uh, as an opportunity to contribute to astronomy um, by working, while working with you. And uh, at the same time, you can give a um, last recommendation to anyone who will watch this recording afterward to like know um, how to get in touch with you and how to know more about what you are doing. So um, I will start maybe by Dr. Nikita and then Dr. Charles and Dr. Emeka. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Um, so in terms of the upcoming events, um, I will mention the one that uh, Charles mentioned, which because hackathons is is what I work on. So yes, that's the first ever AFAS uh, data science hackathon, which will be held in March next year. Um, applications are already open. I think uh, maybe Charles, you can put the link um, in the in the in the chat. Um, it, applications are open for for attending not only uh, the AFAS conference but the the hackathon as well. You don't have to attend both. You can apply to attend either one. And, um, and and motivate for why you would like to attend. If you if you uh, it's open to to undergraduates um, and postgraduates from any science field uh, who who would like to know more about um, data science and machine learning. The only requirement is that you must have some experience with um, programming uh, and particularly Python programming. So even if you do sort of a short um, there are many courses online that offer free free courses for introduction to Python programming. Um, you know, Python programming is is extremely useful in in not only astronomy but but many other fields and uh, certainly in data science and machine learning. So um, yes, if you'd like to apply for that, uh, the applications are open. Um, and uh, um, how to contact me? It's uh, it's just Nikita at astrofordev.org. If you'd like to know more about um, data science, machine learning, uh, or attending hackathons or organizing your own hackathon, um, and like I said, the new website, the Hack for Dev website, which is hackfordev.org, will be launched on the sixth of December. So you can also look at that for for. Um, not only upcoming events that we'll hold, but also uh, for resources that come out of the, the, the hackathon projects, like um, the actual tutorials that we use and um, the videos for, for training tutors and, and other guidelines, guidelines if you would like to try and hold one at your institution. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nikita. Yeah, Dr. Charles, please. Yep. Yep. So um, I just like to 
let everyone know if they if they like to find out more information about anything that I spoke about today, then they can get in touch with me. I'll I'll put my email address in in the chat. If you want to become an, a a member of AFES as a student, you are you are also welcome to apply for student membership. Um, and yeah, if you want to get involved in our outreach activities as well, you are welcome to do so. Um, and just some of the upcoming activities um, is is the World Science Forum that's taking place um, in December. So that's where the world comes together to discuss science, and that's taking place in South Africa this year. But but people can join in 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 hybrid or or or, or virtually. And the African Astronomical Society and Office for Astronomy for Development have collaborated on a session at World Science Forum that's going to be looking at advancing uh, Africa's uh, astronomy agenda. So we'd like to let everyone know that they can join us for that session. You can just look at the World Science Forum website on information on how you can be part of that session. Um, then we've got our 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 early career uh, calls that are going to be coming out. These are for the seed research grant. So if anyone wants to, wants to apply for the seed research grant that's already involved in, 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 in research in astronomy, they can apply for that. And then in March 2023, from the 13th to the 17th of October, that's going to be... Um, the AFES uh, annual conference and, and the business meeting. So we encourage students to send in the abstracts and, and, and be part of that event. And if they can't come down South Africa, they can also uh, join in virtually. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's about it. And yeah, if you need more information, I'm just going to put all of that in the chat now. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, Dr. Emeka, please. Yeah, um, on our own side, um, we'll be holding a workshop on um, the um, well, one of our scientists here designed a mobile radio telescope that can be taken to anywhere for outreach and it's autonomous uses less energy. So, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be conducting a workshop on that, training people on how to fabricate the radio telescope. So, I will what I will do here is I will kind of um, try and get the link. So that anybody who is interested in learning how to build his or her own mobile radio telescope can do that with um, um, materials you can source locally. It's an autonomous system that it can operate remotely with um, less power. So I will try and get that information and most likely maybe share it with you. Maybe you can put it across. Maybe some people can join online, but people are coming to be part of it in person. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I realized that I didn't really properly also introduce myself at the beginning of the panel. I will do that at the end. Uh, I'm Charles Emezuisi. I'm Cameroonian. I'm the Space Generation Advisory Council National Point of Contact for Cameroon. I completed the master's space study at the International Space University, among other background. And uh, now I'm at SES, that is uh, in French Société Européenne de Satellite, like um, one of the um, leaders in the satellite telecommunication industry. Um, I was so privileged and uh, glad to moderate this panel discussion. And I would like to thank you all the, uh, once again, Dr. Nikita, Dr. Charles, Dr. Emeka, for your time. I know it's not easy, it's Sunday, it's Saturday. Um, but this, I think, it was really, really awesome. And actually, maybe we can do like a family picture, even if we don't have uh, all the participants online. But um, those who are online, maybe you can also turn on your camera so that we can do a quick um, last picture together. Um, I would like to thank you really sincerely uh, for taking the time for this. We are going to um, reshape the recording and also share that with um, with others on SDC YouTube channel later on for them to also enjoy the content of this discussion and uh, get to um, know a little bit more about what is happening into the astronomy, um, I will say, field today. So thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, the participants are not really turning on the camera. However, that's that's still fine. Um, yeah, it's Saturday, it's still fine. Um, I want to be more respectful of your time and just end this panel now. But once again, 
Thank you for your time, for your contribution. You were supposed to announce the winner of the quiz. We got the responses already. Um, however, we need to filter that a little bit more because they are, they are like eight with almost 19 out of 20 points. So um, for the open questions, we need to kind of give different mark to that. Um, and that will help us to kind of balance that at the end. So um, the, the winner has been to receive the telescope that OED um, sent to us. Thank you very much for shipping that to Cameroon. We got up to six small telescopes. We really appreciate that too. And we want to be fully transparent on that. And we are going to announce the winner by email later. Um, and they will be able to collect the uh, prices at Eurocadio office in Yaoundé, um, where they are hosting the acting space competition for today in front of the Polytechnic Institute of Yaoundé. Thank you once again, um, and goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, and let's keep in touch. Right, yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good